Hello, I'm DB Velocity, back with another edition of Utilities That Rule, where I discuss my favorite utilities and their features. And today I'm discussing the Rossum Electro Music Control Forge. Are you sitting down? Because this is a true heavyweight and tends to blow minds. Don't worry though, I'll just note the basic features to try and keep it simple, and then I'll tackle a couple scenarios of this module, which will hopefully shed light on the interface and the practical uses of a module like this, as it's often wondered how such a complex thing can be musical and playable in a system. To me, it's one of the most satisfying utilities where programming it can be rather intuitive, much like any sequencer, allowing you to build on the programs for chains of events and just have endless direction with it, making it a system all your own. So let's hit the bullet points from the quick start guide, and I'll give a bit of my own commentary for each section. I want to further demystify this module and show that it doesn't need to be a pain to use, rather that it just appears so from the endless possibilities for modulation. So for the bullet points, we have time and level, which sets the duration and target level of each segment. It's pretty easy to see why most people present this as an elaborate envelope generator, which is selling it quite short. That said, the level parameter needs an asterisk as level can be of several permutations, with the first main choices being either absolute or relative. Absolute is exactly as you set the level, and relative is to modify the level based on the prior level. Then, sublevel options are whether it's a quantized level to give a semitone note value for Western scale, and or it can also have a depth of random with true linear random, or one that can gravitate to the desired level with Gaussian random. Next is transition shape. Now things are getting more interesting, because from basic linear envelope shapes, you go to exponential and more. So much more. 67 shapes in all, to conjure LFO style movement of sorts to chaotic random, and then we get to just plain value jumps or holds, which is used for classic voltage sequencing, and the most notable shape is likely the pass-through. It's this one that can be put to great effect, if you reframe it as a switch style function where the other source is selected for that segment duration. Pass-through can also be subject to the quantize option. Moving on, we have conditional jumps, or jumping from any segment to any segment of any preset, if you give said segment the instruction to do it and rules for when. You get one conditional jump per stage, but with each segment having its own, you can do plenty. Because now to sum it up, you're thinking about time, level, with an asterisk, shape of transition, and an optional jump. And now the next part is a possible trigger. Yet it is not exactly tied to the segments, but rather its own rules should you want. So for triggers, simply said, it's two triggers that can be fired when the assigned event allows it, independent for each preset program. Example assignments include at each segment start, when a jump occurs, end of cycle, or even as a pass-through of logic and gate inputs. And it can also take on the role of gate behavior rather than just trigger, but only when tied to the segments for duration to follow. The next bullet point is the inputs. Gate and trig, logic, and CVs. All the ends that benefit from a variety of voltage source types, like say, an octocontroller or another control forge or satellite. Logic is easily an either on or off affair, also known as a gate that is true or false, so it's essentially for jump conditions and or triggers. The CV ends can also be used to set threshold for jump conditions. The next segment is segment buttons, which are selected for editing and direct manual event jumps. This is where you get musical with it in a tactile way if you desire. Next we have the presets. Well there's good room for storage without the need to back up your stuff to make room for more. Which by the way, you can do that as well. Create a way without fear to 500 slots and you can always load the factory stuff again if you feel like it. And the final bullet point is the preset sequencer. So yet another function that has its own rules. 8 segments not enough in your preset? Link as many as you want in whatever order. Essentially, with a max of 200 programs per sequence, times the 8 stages, we're now up to an optional 1,600 stages of envelope. I mean, you, now you see how the envelope analogy is a bit limiting. So not necessarily envelope stages, but individual segments with time, level, shape, and optional jump conditions as well as a couple triggers anywhere they're in on the 200 programs with their own rules. Utilizing this section can seem like pro-level stuff, I suppose. I mean, with this option, you can 
link stuff and move around that chain via several methods. So functioning with the functions. Time to explore. I begin my use by addressing two questions. What am I controlling? And how do I want that control to evolve or progress along the timeline? If you have an intention in mind, then it all becomes pretty simple to set up. Sure, it can be an envelope to control a filter, but I have envelopes, so what's something I'd like to evolve to or progress into at a different bar in the song? The control forge can be an LFO with the same question applied. I have LFOs, but what could they evolve to shape-wise or frequency? Or it can even just go from LFO to the envelope as part of the progression. Perhaps it's just an unstable LFO that has a bit of random drift. You can start with a simple program, and maybe you find a pattern of progressions to take place. This is what this module does. It takes core principles together to make a utility that just screams endless possibilities but you have to focus on what the given task is and potentially take that beyond the other basics, which can't quite do it without more modules and patching involved. The more you set up core functions and save them, the easier it gets to fine tune and save or copy and paste. You get some starting points from the factory, but this is all about making it your own. So let's get familiar with programming it and it all becomes easy to use. Starting out, you mainly stay in the program mode to achieve the task. Then when you string your tasks together, you can play the events. So I prefer to start from scratch and you can highlight any preset and basically just hit the save. And if you scroll all the way down past zero, you'll get to where it says erase and you hold for a couple seconds and it will erase. And now I can go a step further and actually save that to an empty slot and I'll go to slot one and save it there and that way I've got a template so I won't have to do this again and you can save any style template you want. So my first example will be to program an octave jumping phrase based on the pitch input to CV1. This is my quick twist to the major scale demo preset though it could be any musical skill if you're inclined. Yet, I'll start from scratch as mentioned. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pitch output for my IntelliJ Tetrapad, which is in keyboard mode, and send that pitch to the CV1 input here. And the next thing is to take the gate output from Tetrapad, send that to the gate trig in, so that it resets with every note key press. And you could use any controller or keyboard that has CV and gate out for this scenario. And the next thing I'll do is patch the positive output to my oscillator. And I'll take the, uh, let's see, the trigger and send that to the simple envelope that's opening my VCA. And that's all just a basic synth voice patch over there. So the last thing I'll do is I'm going to take a subdivided clock for note divisions and send that to the logic input because I want to try and sync this externally. And... Um, so now I'm all patched up, and on segment one, what I'll do is I'll set the level to be zero volt relative so that it doesn't fluctuate in any form or way. And it probably won't matter, but it's just to be safe because what I'll do is it's going to go to CV1 input, and this is going to act like the track portion of a track and hold. And then the next thing is to set the jump mode to wait for logic rise. And the target will be just segment two. And that should be all set up now. So I'll go to segment two and I'll go ahead and program it up to also wait for logic rise. And it will jump to segment three and then the level I will set that to also be zero volt relative quantized. And the shape, I'm going to go ahead and set that to be the hold portion of our track and hold, which is the DC delay. Now I can speed things up and basically copy everything over by exiting all the parameter edits. And I just hold that down and then copy it to the segments that I want to copy. And now all the parameters for that particular segment will be copied over. 
and that's pretty much it. So the last thing I need to do is I make sure that everything has the proper target for its jump. So I'll change that up. Go to five, six, and seven, and eight, and back to one so that it loops. Now I should be all set up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. And when I exit here, everything should be basically the same, aside from segment one. So I'm going to go ahead and start dialing in some values. So we'll just say, I want this level to be jump up one octave, and then down an octave, and that'll be back down to the root. And... Obviously, if I go up two octaves and then up another octave, it'll be three octaves above the root um, because relative is just playing on the prior segment. So I have to keep that in mind as I go along. So if I go up two, I might want to go down three and then back up one, something like that. And let's just say I go ahead and do one last little octave jump in the end. And it should reset to the CV pass through on segment one. So I won't worry about that. Now the last thing I need to program is the trigger for this particular preset. And so I will set that to be beginning ending segment will allow me to have it tied to the segments and I can dial in um, a gate in this mode. But I'll just go ahead and leave it on fast. Um, but I have noticed that fast is sometimes a little too fast, depending on the module you're trying to send the trigger to. Um, anyhow, I should be fine here. So with all of that done, I should be able to um, start up my patch here. And I have a little drum track going as well. Um, I'll make sure that's hopefully dialed down enough. I'm going to hit start, and we should hear this jumping around. Whenever I press that new key, it will just reset. So that's pretty much it. And it's pretty familiar territory. But I can take this a step further. And instead of using a regular subdivided clock, I can use a pattern. And now we're starting to go a little bit beyond and exploit the awesomeness of modular. And so that's pretty much it. Now let's go ahead and we can save this, and I'll just show you real quick. It's uh, pretty simple. We'll just go ahead and go to that slot here and select it. And for naming it, we can use the segment buttons. So I just scroll to each character. And if you need to do like, see, I keep passing the letter I want. Actually, OK, here we go. Octave. I'll just make it simple but if you need like a uh, a capital letter right here and you just hold down these two segments and that should go to your uppercase so I'll just say jump and let's go back down to lowercase and next I can click and hold that, and it will save it. Done. All right, I'm back in my empty program, and I'm going to go ahead and start this one by setting the tempo, because Control Forge kind of likes to live in its own clocked universe. But there will be an advantage to this, and I'm going to set it to match my current project here. 
which is approximately 143, but it's going to be 142.9, and then I'll exit. And now what I'm going to do is go and make sure everything is set to absolute on my level. And you'll notice the times are now in note divisions. And what's going to happen, you see I've already got some stuff patched up here. I have a trigger that comes out every four musical bars. And that will reset and start again. So what I'm going to do is program the segments to basically stay within those four bars or a little under. And so everything will basically still stay in sync and be pretty smooth. Um, especially at four musical bars. There shouldn't be any variance, really. Um, anyhow, you have, uh, let's see, two half steps, three, four. I'm going to actually change this down to a quarter note. And I'm going to copy that over so that I have four quarter notes for one full measure, and then I'll change this to be one full measure. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy that over to segment 8 so that these ones are going to be half, half note value. Let's see. A little tricky scrolling sometimes, but there we are. I'm going to just copy that over. So that should be four measures, right? One, two, three, and four. Boom. Okay, so that takes care of the time setting. And then for the levels... I'm just going to kind of dial in some random stuff, and I might do some extreme jumps here. Because what I'm going to control this time is the speed knob on my magneto. And so I don't really concern myself too much with quantized values when it comes to that particular modulation. I might just skew everything a little bit more instead of solid bolts. And I can play around and maybe even throw in some randomness, but um, this is just to get started out. So let's go to the shape and set this to be our DC delay again. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but when I'm editing a particular parameter, you can copy just the parameter over. So that's what I'm doing here. And now for this shape, um, I don't know, I might, I might play with that. And then for this one, I'm going to go ahead and make that be one of our CV envelope or CV LFOs being passed through. And now what I'll do is let's go ahead and get things patched up a little bit here. So we have the positive to the speed control on Magneto. And let's go ahead and take a trigger output see, right here and go. I'm going to go to the um, shift input. And let's say I go with trigger two to the reverse playhead uh, of the transport control. And further, I'm going to need to set up my triggers so that they're actually triggering. So let's say I want it to be logic rise for that one. And, oops, wrong button. We'll make that just a 10 milliseconds would be solid enough for pretty much any module. We'll make this one the logic fall. Um, yeah, yeah, why not? Change that, 10 milliseconds. Okay, so I have triggers programmed in and the logic is basically um, just a looped, locked random uh, pulse coming from Octa controller. So let's see, I've got a basic little noise burst the noise is coming from the sync eater in noise mode uh, on beat one of every bar. So let's um, first dial down the wet so that you can hear just the dry sound of that. Of 
course I have my drums playing. Let's turn the drums down a little bit so you can just hear the noise burst. Pretty simple. Nothing spectacular. I'll probably close it down a little bit here. Okay. So let's dial that back up and start to bleed this in. So obviously I can just kind of play around and find the settings I like, you know, um, so I can go to the segments and dial in different levels. There's And then um, we can get just a little bit crazier. Say I want to do something more like this. And we'll take that negative output. And let's send that to the spring. And there we go. Yeah, you know, and just like typical modular jam around, find the things that you like. And then save them. You know, I think I've gone on long enough, but that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you today. Um, that it doesn't have to be super complicated. Just start with basics and then build on it. And... I'll add that there is still the preset sequencer and auto chain functions and so much you can explore with the jumps and CV conditions that, uh, for example, with a joystick, you can fly around your programs and when you're ready, you can get a satellite module and load everything into that. It's just far too much to cover for possibilities as your only real limitation is your imagination. But I hope that gives you some ideas and I thank you all for watching. I'm DB Velocity, and if you found any of this helpful, please hit the like button and leave comments so I know how I'm doing. And I wish you all the best. Take care now.